what bothers me the most? And I think that this section could use some more texture. Now, I already mentioned this to you. When you're trying to create a sense of depth in a painting, you need linear perspective, you need atmospheric perspective, but you also need paint variety. You need the mountain to be thin and the trees in front to be very, very thick. You need that difference in thickness to help pull the foreground toward you and the thin to push the background away. So these passages in the mountains back here are never going to get very thick. I'm going to keep them as thin as I can. I'm going to keep those as thin as I can. These, on the contrary, will be as thick as I can make them. I'm just going to do one more of those strokes. So I'm just smoothing out these distant shapes. Those shapes in the quality of the paint going back. And so now I'm all set up to make some really thick strokes down here to pull that toward us. So I don't do this that often, but just to illustrate the point, just squeezing some actual titanium white out onto the panel. And the reason for this is if you're mixing your paints, if you're mixing your paints right on the panel, you're going to have much thicker paint than if you mix it on the palette and then pick it up and then move it to your painting. You'll leave paint behind each time you do that. So the idea here is that this is going to end up really thick. Just have to get these colors to be right. You can try this if you want, or you can just ladle on. You can ladle, you know, mix the paint on your, mix the paint on your palette and then ladle it on. But this texture is going to be clearly a texture of the foreground because of its thickness. Isn't it almost uncanny how close this looks to us now compared to the mountain back there? Not just the color, but also how thick the paint is, how thickly I've applied this paint. Mixing some color on my palette, just the two yellows in my Viridian. Little bit of pyrrole red into the mixture. A 
a little bit of white and a little bit more gold ochre as we fade down this hill. So just to illustrate how that buildup of paint comes forward while those thin passages go back. Now you can see the contrast and the juxtaposition between those two. And I'm going to keep going. And I want to see a similar thing happen with the texture of this thing here, given its proximity to the viewer. I'm not going to squeeze that one right out onto the canvas, but a lot of viridian and gold ochre mixed together here. Really a lot of paint on my brush. I'm actually going to grab my palette knife and just get all that paint. And I am smoothing it out like frosting, just gently working that out. Just going to smear some. I like that cohesive stroke better. All right, so that's thick now too, but it's simple by comparison to some of this busyness. I'm just tapping it and pulling up little sort of impasto chunks here. All right, so now I'm going to mix gold ochre and bismuth and viridian together into the green that I already have, a little bit more, a little bit more gold ochre. And this can stand in as the foliage there. using as much paint for all of this as I can. So if you're, feel, if, you're, if you're painting with me and you feel like this is a little out of control, you know, you can use a little less paint if that would make you more comfortable. But I'm, I'm really trying to build up the texture here because I, I want you to see how effective it is in the sort of sculpting of the landscape where we're, we've used line and color so far and now we're using the actual the actual three-dimensional texture to create the depth to create the distance
All right. A little bit more of a gold ochre shadow right there in the source. another just working this back and forth using these horizontal strokes to show this flat lying land that you could walk out across another cold ochre stroke just to show the differences in the height of some of these. Okay, so now it's getting the trees to feel like they belong with this big flat shape. So, or with the, the big shape of the grass growing down the hill. So I'm just incorporating now those edges together because they need to look like they're growing up into the bottoms of these trees. Restating that dark. And I'm just dabbing the corner, dabbing the edge. to get those edges right. Love it. Okay, that edge I like. May need more in a minute, but that's a good place to start. I'm gonna pull some cobalt blue, mix with some bismuth yellow. So you get a nice fresh green and then just mix some pyrrole into that. A little bit more bismuth. And bring that, yeah, look at that. Bring that into here. And what am I doing? I am making this texture a little bit thicker, just so that it makes sense with the incredible thickness of texture on this hillside right here. working that edge, asking what bothers me the most. The edge bothered me the most there for a second. But I'm gonna go back over here and just finish modeling out the light, which should in theory be even thicker than the shadow. Why all this thick paint? Just to help pull these shapes toward the eye. While the thinner shapes of the distant trees and plains, trees and fields recede. I need to find a little bit of an accent 
somewhere in this tree. So I'm going to put it right there. It needs to be a little bit of a crisp dark, so it feels like it's actually a thing and not like a big nebulous sort of fluff ball that's not attached. There, I've attached it. Let's attach this smaller tree as well. So now I want to see that similar accent here. Didn't quite get it. Mixed some alizarin into that green that I already had to make it darker, a little bit warmer. This is a mixture of ultramarine blue and transparent oxide red. Make that even darker. Remember, this is the this is the darkest dark we had in the painting. So that that's something to remember not to lose that dark. And just a little bit more of modeling of the interior as it comes over the tree is round and so it is a little cooler on top facing up towards the stormy blues above and then as it goes and faces down toward the ground it gets that darker warm color because of all of this around it And by all of this around it, I mean all of that reflected bounce light coming off of this ground around. Just working out the light a little bit more. Again, this should be, in theory, pretty, pretty yellow. Moving out a little bit of that texture, getting a lot of glare. All right, to be really careful with this big brush because I don't want to smear things together and it's so it's so thick in here that there's definitely the paint is so thick in here that I definitely could do that without trying too hard so I am a little bit right there but I can fix that but I still can't have glare so Ever so gently, I've got to work out some of that glare.
Oops, a little stroke up there. I'm gonna have to deal with that. Okay, so there's more to do, but can you see how just building up all that tremendous texture here just pulls that toward the front? I'm very happy with that effect. 